Good day. Welcome to our lesson for today, which is all about plant growth and development. Plant as organism change over time. Ito yung pagbabago sa kanyang length, height, and diameter. At naman measure natin yan in a quantitative form. Yun yung tinatawag natin na growth. At pag sinasabi naman natin na development, ito yung mga pagbabago, for example, doon sa isang buds na magiging isang primary leaves. Yung isang seeds na nag-germinate na magiging seedlings. Yung isang stems or leaves na later on magkakaroon ng flowers at yung mga ovary na nagiging fruits. These qualitative changes constitute to development. Ibig sabihin, pag sinasabi natin na growth, this is quantitative changes. At kapag development, qualitative changes naman. In this video, you will understand how plants grow and develop and what are the different hormones that regulates the plant growth and development. Growth in multicellular organism occurs in meristematic tissues. These tissues are made up of cells that are actively dividing and they go through a type of cell division na tinatawag natin na mitosis. Again, a major purpose ng mitosis is for growth and replace worn out cells. It is also located at the tips of the plant such as the root and shoot apical meristem. Ang meristematic tissues ay makikita natin na naka-arrange in layered rings tulad ng vascular cambium at cork cambium. They are responsible for the increase in the diameter of roots and stems. Yung iba naman, makikita natin at the basis of the stem and leaves at nagiging actively dividing sila kapag nasusugatan yung isang halaman. Ang responsible doon, yung intercalary meristem. And the major question dito sa ating lesson ay, how do plant cells and tissues develop into a mature organs? Pero bago natin sagutin yan at pag-usapan, kailangan muna natin malaman ano nga ba yung pinagkaiba ng indeterminate growth at determinate growth. Ang pinagkaiba nila pag sinasabi natin na indeterminate growth, ito yung growth occurs throughout the plant's life. Ibig sabihin, hanggat merong necessary resources na makukuha yung isang alaman, patuloy siyang lumalaki hanggang matapos yung kanyang growing season. At pag sinasabi naman natin na determinate growth, ito yung mga plant parts na tumitigil sa paglaki after nilang ma-reach yung certain size. Example, yung mga dahon, thorns, or flowers. And plants are capable of indeterminate growth dahil dun sa kanilang meristematic tissue that divide when conditions permit, leading to the new cells that can elongate. And we have two main types of meristems. Number one is what we call the apical meristems located at the tips of the roots and shoots and in auxiliary buds of shoots. And connected dito yung tinatawag natin na primary growth kung saan nagpo-provide ng additional cells that enable growth in length. And the primary growth allows the root to extend throughout the soil. And yung mga shoots naman to increase their exposure in length. Meron tayong tinatawag na lateral meristem, located at the side or lateral part of a plant. Pag sinasabi natin na secondary growth, ito yung growth in thickness. Ibig sabihin, yung mga woody plants, lumalaki yung kanilang circumference in the parts of stems and roots na hindi lumalaki or no longer grow in length. Mga cells natin within the meristems divide re relatively frequently para mag-generate pa ng mga additional cells. At yung mga new cells displaced from the meristems ay tinatawag natin na derivatives. Divide until the cells they produce become specialized in mature tissues. The relationship between primary and secondary growth ay makikita natin sa example ngayon. This one is what we call the Nara tree. At pagpasok ng month ng November to January, makikita natin na naglalagas na siya ng dahon. And then pagpasok naman ng February to May, makikita natin na meron na siyang dahon at bulakla. During each growing season, yung mga primary growth kasi natin ay nag -e extend ng shoots. And the secondary growth tickets the part that formed in previous years. Ang dahilan kung bakit lumalaki o lumalapad yung isang halaman o puno. Although plants grow throughout their lives, namamatay din naman sila. Based on the length of their life cycle, flowering plants can be categorized as annuals, biennials, and Perennials. At pag sinasabi natin na annuals, nakakompleto nila yung kanilang life cycle in a single year or less. From germination to flowering to seed production up to death. 
Ang example natin dito, yung mga wildflowers, for example, yung zinnia. O di naman kaya yung mga staple food crops natin, tulad ng legumes, cereal grains, and rice. At pag sinasabi natin na biennials, eto naman yung nagre-require ng dalawang growing season para makompleto yung kanilang life cycle. For example nito, yung mga turnips, o di naman kaya carrots. Pag sinasabi natin na perennials, they live many years. At katulad dito ng mga puno, shrubs, and some grasses. Kaugnay ng pinag-uusapan natin sa plant growth and development is yung primary growth of roots. Yung tip ng root natin ay natataklo ba ng tinatawag natin na root cap? Kung saan pinaprotektahan niya yung delicate apical meristem as the root pushes through the abrasive soil during primary growth. At yung root cap na yan ay nagpo-produce or nagsasecrete na polysaccharide slime kung saan nilulubricate niya yung soil around the tip of the root. And the growth occurs just behind these three overlapping zones. Yung tinatawag natin na zone of elongation, zone of cell division, and zone of maturation. The zone of cell division includes the root apical meristem and its derivatives. Yung mga bagong root cells natin ay napoproduce in this region. Includes the cells of the root cap. And typically, a few millimeters behind the tip of the root is what we call the zone of elongation where the most of the growth occurs at root cells elongate. Sometimes to more than 10 times their original length. And zone of elongation in this zone pushes the tip farther into the soil. Meanwhile, the root apical meristem keeps adding cells to the younger end of the zone of elongation. Even before the root cells finish lengthening, many begin specializing in structure and function. In zone of maturation, cells complete their differentiation and become distinct cell types. The primary growth of a root produces its epidermis, ground tissue, and yung mga vascular tissue. Water and minerals absorbed from the soil ay kailangan pumasok sa tinatawag natin na roots epidermis. At yung mga root hairs ang siyang responsible for this absorption. Siya din yung nag -e enhance ng process by greatly increasing the surface area of epidermis. And in monocot roots, the steel is a vascular cylinder consisting of a solid core of xylem and the phloem. And in many monocot roots, the vascular tissue it consists of central core of parenchyma cells surrounded by a ring of xylem and a ring of phloem. And in most eudicots or dicot roots, the xylem has a star-like appearance, like this one, in cross-section. And the phloem occupies the indentation between the arms of the xylem, which is the star in structure. At the ground tissue, at ang makikita natin sa ating feature, ay binubuo mostly ng mga parenchyma cells that fills the cortex, the region between the vascular cylinder and the epidermis. And then the cells within the ground tissue store carbohydrates and absorb water and minerals from the soil. The innermost layer of the cortex is what we call the endodermis, a cylinder one cell thick that forms the boundary with the vascular cylinder. And the endodermis is a selective barrier that regulates the passage of substance from the soil into the vascular cylinder. The lateral roots arise from the pericycle, the outermost layer of the vascular cylinder, which is inside the endodermis. And then the lateral root pushes through the cortex and epidermis until it emerges from the established root. At ngayon, pag-usapan naman natin yung primary growth of shoots. Una na dyan yung tinatawag natin na shoot apical meristem. Ito yung dome-shaped mass of dividing cells at that shoot tip. At yung mga leaves na nade-develop ay mula dun sa tinatawag natin na leaf primordia. Ito yung mga tinatawag natin na finger-like projections na tumutubo along the sides of apical meristems. And within a bud, yung mga young leaves natin ay merong space na close together dahil yung mga internodes natin ay very short. At yung shoot elongation is due to the lengthening of internode cells below the shoot tip. Branching, which is also part of primary growth, arises from the activation of the axillary buds. Sa bawat axillary bud, meron tayong tinatawag na shoot apical stem. 
At kung sakali man natanggalin natin yung apical bud, yung growth of lateral buds ay lalabas. Dahilan para maging bashier yung isang halaman. At kung tatanggalin natin yung lateral buds dun sa tabi, ibig sabihin naman yung tubo ng halaman ay pataas or magiging longer dahil dun sa terminal bud. At sa mga monocots, lalong-lalo na doon sa mga damo or grasses, yung meristematic activity ay nangyayari doon sa kanilang base ng stems and ng leaves. At yung area na yon ay tinatawag natin na intercalary meristem. Yung mga intercalary meristem ang dahilan kung bakit nakaka-recover agad yung mga damo kapag sila ay tinabas natin or pinuton. At bago tayo pumunta sa susunod natin pag-uusapan, sagutan muna natin ang tanong na ito. Why cell division in meristematic tissues It's important to plant life. Kailangan yung ilagay ang inyong sagot doon sa ating comment box. And now, bumalik na tayo sa ating discussion today. Kanina, nasagot natin yung question na how do plant cells and tissues develop into mature organs? So, nalaman din natin in our previous lesson na yung mga plant cells natin, yung parenchyma cells, yung colenchyma cells, yung sclerenchyma cells, ay tumutulong para mabuo din yung iba't ibang klase ng tissues tulad ng dermal tissue, vascular tissue, and yung ating ground tissue. And yung mga tissues na yon ang siya na mamubuo doon sa ating mga plant organs, which is the leaves, the stems, and the roots. At ngayon, kailangan naman nating malaman ano ba yung kailangan ng isang halaman for growth and development. Or, what do plants need for growth and development? At yung mga bagay na kailangan ng ating halaman for growth and development ay mga napag-usapan na rin natin sa ating previous lesson. Una na dyan yung tinatawag natin na water and minerals. Yung ating water and minerals ay naabsorb ng roots o ng ating root hairs. And then later on, itatransport naman siya ng ating xylem papunta sa stem. Again, pag xylem, nagtatransport ng water and minerals. Iba siya kay phloem. Dahil si phloem, nagtatransport naman ng food. And then later on, magkakaroon tayo ng tinatawag na transpiration doon sa ating Lives, kung saan nalolos yung water to water before at kailangan palitan ito ng water na iaabsorb ng roots. Yung transpiration na yan ang dahilan din kung bakit nalo-regulate yung water content at yung temperature ng isang halaman. At sumunod naman dyan yung tinatawag natin na light energy from the sun. Yung mga light energy from the sun which they absorb with chlorophyll molecules ay matatagpuan natin sa mesophyll ng mga dahon. At yung mga water, carbon dioxide, and light energy ay ginagamit para makapag-manufacture ng food in a form of sugar na tinatawag natin na glucose. And kailangan ng plants for growth and development yung mga gases from the air in the form of carbon dioxide and oxygen which they take up through the stomata of the leaf epidermis. Yung mga halaman natin ay kailangan din ng oxygen sa aerobic respiration. Yung mga glucose na may breakdown in the presence of oxygen sa pamamagitan ng respiration. At dahil dito, nakakapag-produce tayo ng tinatawag na energy storage molecules o yung adenosine triphosphate. Yung mga intermediate products ng respiration at yung energy from ATP ay ginagamit para makapag-produce ng mga organic molecules tulad ng lipids, proteins, and nucleic acids. At kailangan din ng halaman for growth and development yung mga organic molecules as building blocks at yung iba naman ginagamit bilang hormones. Una na dyan yung tinatawag natin na carbohydrate cellulose na makikita natin sa mga cell wall. Pati na rin yung mga lipids na makikita natin sa mga membranes, yung mga proteins for ribosomes at yung mga nucleic acids na matatagpuan natin sa chromosomes. At bukod sa pag-build ng new parts ng ating mga organic molecules, meron pa rin silang ibang specific function. For example, yung ating nucleic acid kung saan nagsaserve sila as repository of genetic information. Yung mga proteins naman natin, sila naman yung enzymes na nag-speed up ng life process involving chemical reaction. At yung ibang organic molecules natin ay nag act naman as hormones. At bago natin pag-usapan yung iba't ibang klase ng hormones na nag a as regulators ng halaman for growth and development, sagutan muna natin ang mga question na to. Kailangan muna nating i-label ano nga ba yung mga parts na ito. 
So again, balikan lang natin yung diniscuss natin kanina at ilagay natin yung ating sagot dun sa comment box. Kailangan din natin ilagay ano ba yung mga different zone na makikita natin dun sa ating roots. At label din natin yung mga missing parts ng ating monocot root. At yung ating dicot root. At last, yung ating shoot tip. Again, kailangan yung ilagay lahat ng inyong sagot doon sa ating comment box. At babalik tayo sa ilang sandali. At ang huli natin pag-uusapan ngayon ay ang mga plant regulators of plant growth and development. Yung mga halaman natin ay nagpo-produce ng mga certain chemical substance that regulate growth and development. Ito yung mga tinatawag natin na plant regulators or mas kilala na hormones. Yung hormones ay mga chemical substance that the body produce in very small amounts. Yung mga hormones din ay nagpo-produce in a specific sites dun sa mga actively dividing tissues of the plant body in response to environmental at internal plant signals. Sila din ay natatransport sa iba't ibang bahagi ng halaman kung saan napopromote or napipigilan yung kanilang growth and development. At mayroon tayong iba't ibang klase ng plant hormones na pag-uusapan today. Una na dyan yung tinatawag natin na auxins. Auxins are mainly produced in the root and shoot apical nail stem. Sila ay nakaka-apekto sa growth ng isang halaman sa pamamagitan ng pag-stimulate ng cells para mag-divide and elongate. Sensitive sa light ang mga auxins at ang dahilan kung bakit nagbumove sila palayo. Auxin is sensitive to light and tends to move away from it. Makikita natin si picture, yung light source ay naandito sa taas at yung mga auxin ay concentrated dito. At once na nasa kabilang side, yung source o yung light source, makikita natin na nag-move away yung ating auxin. The reason is, when one side of the stem is exposed to light, auxin moves toward the unlit side. Because the dark side has more auxin than the lighted side, the cells on the dark side elongate faster than those on the lighted side. This explains the growth curvature of the stem toward light. The growth movement of a plant or plant in response to external stimulus like light and gravity is what we call tropism. At meron tayong dalawang klase ng tropism. The phototropism, which is the growth of shoot toward or away the light, and we have gravitropism. The shoots bend upward and the roots curve downward. Mayroon din tayong tinatawag na positive and negative phototropism at positive and negative gravitropism. Yung stem, sinasabi natin na positive phototropism dahil tumutubo siya or it grows toward the source of light. While the roots is negative or negatively phototropic because they are grow away from the light. Sa gravitropism, yung roots natin nag exhibit ng positive gravitropism dahil the roots grow into the soil. While the shoots exhibit negative gravitropism because the shoots grow towards the sunlight. That's also one reason why seeds can germinate regardless in their position. And we have what we call the cytokinins that are produced in roots. These are plant regulators that work in combination with auxin to stimulate or control cell division and differentiation. When a piece of parenchyma tissue from a stem is cultured in the absence of cytokinins, the cells grow very large but do not divide. But if cytokinins are added along with auxin, the cells divide. It means cytokinin alone have no effect. Cytokinin also control the apical dominance and what we call the anti-aging effects. That's what we call the apoptosis, a type of program cell division. Ibig sabihin, pinapabagal niya yung apoptosis dun sa isang halaman. 
and we have also what we call gibberellins, the plant regulators produce in seeds and juvenile plants. They promote seed germination in response to water availability and flowering in response to day length. And we have the abscissins or abscisic acid synthesized mainly in the root cup, mature leaves and fruits. They promote bad dormancy and affect the closing of stomata in the leaf and drought tolerance. Abscissin inhibits the seed germination to help the plant cope with environmental stresses. And last is the ethylene. It is a gaseous plant regulator that inhibits stem and root elongation. It promotes leaf abscission, ripening of fruits, wilting of flowers, and aging of leaves. And to end our discussion for today, always remember that things do not just happen by accident. Every plant structure has a particular function, and every function contributes to the growth and development of a plant. And when the structure falls away, so does the function for which it was formed. And the plant responds to changes in the environment. As day becomes night, as seasons change, they produce hormones that can either promote or prevent growth, induce or inhibit development. At kung tayo mga tao or human ay nag-grow and nagde-develop, ganun din naman yung mga plants. They grow and develop in a specific condition or environmental factors. At lahat ng iyon nakaka-apekto sa kanilang paglaki. I hope you learned something today in our discussion. Always remember, science is life and science for all. Thank you for watching.